Thanks for tuning in. This is The Sweet Cyclist, and today we're going to be having a fun review and build of the LEGO Creator Ford Mustang. So here we have the box. As usual, LEGO does a really great job of packaging. You can see the design is really crisp, bright, large box, uh, bright graphics. You can see it's a blue Ford Mustang with white stripes. Uh, if we go over here, you see the number of parts. It's pretty astounding. Uh, most of the parts are kind of generic, and then you see some kind of more specific ones that really complete the look. And here you actually see the full size, actual size of the wheel. If we switch it to the back side, you can see with each LEGO Creator model, they usually add a little uh, creative, unique touch. Uh, for this one, they have this kind of dual mode, so you can convert it from a standard Mustang to kind of a hot rod version. You got a blower, you got side exhaust, spoiler, front ram. So really nice features. Uh, as usual, LEGO Creator doors open, windows open, uh, the trunks open, fully detailed engine, you see decals. So it's pretty impressive. Let's go ahead and open the box. So with the box, you get quite a few pieces. In this model, they have six bags of Legos. Uh, each bag kind of corresponds to the portion of the build. So they're labeled and really easy to kind of open and then uh, slowly work through it instead of having to open everything at the same time. If we take a look at the decals. You can see really cool California license plates. You have some of the motor decals, the rear view mirror, uh, radio. So pretty nice details. Uh, the other thing they do really well is kind of the instruction booklet. So you can see this is a pretty hefty book. Really high detail, glossy paper, thick paper. Definitely don't lose it. Now with each model they usually have some kind of historical background, giving you, giving you a little background on the vehicle. So here you have kind of the Mustang history, some uh, advertisements, so pretty nice. And then the instructions themselves, uh, we can see here six stages with the six bags. Kind of start with the chassis and then work your way through to the final details and then complete the decals and you have the full car. This manual is about 200 pages. So this is a fairly long build as most of them are. As far as the instructions, really easy to follow. No words, just kind of directions and highlighting. So pretty easy to use. So this is all we need to kind of get started. We have our booklet, put our decals to the side, and uh, we're gonna throw it on time-lapse and give you little updates every time we finish a bag. So stay tuned. Alright, so we've now completed bag one, and you can see actually pretty good progress. We've got kind of the major components of the chassis built. We can kind of get an idea of the scale. Uh, the coolest thing is kind of the front steering mechanism. So if I zoom in here, you can actually see we have upper lower control arm. We have these nice kind of hinge hitch type pieces that kind of couple it and give it freedom to rotate. We got two kind of uh, controller arms here that transfer this rotation to the wheels themselves. And then this large gear set here. And you can see this is where the steering wheel will eventually be and that's kind of your steering column. So it transfers the motion. But really cool. This is a feature you don't see in the other creator models. Well, especially designed for this model. As you can see, it's pretty complicated for what it is. We have the side of the chassis done. And if you look at, compared to the picture, we have the exterior portion, same exterior portion. And then we've also completed what looks like the raising mechanism. So you can see here, there's a gear, a little worm gear. 
if I rotate that, that'll spin, that'll rotate this axis. What well, I'm guessing this is what will do the kind of uh, hot rod version. I would bet you just kind of rotate this back and forth to spin it up and down. And pretty cool, you can kind of see where the interior is starting to come together. So not bad for one back. So we'll put it back on time lapse and tackle the next back. All right guys, we finished back two. So we've made a lot of progress on back two. We built off the chassis and now we have the rear mechanism that raises and lowers the back end. You can see we've attached that previous portion that was attached to the worm gear. We've added a little coupler here and added a pivoting rear axle. So you can see as I rotate this, this will come around and go to the maximum rake or back to flat. We've also kind of built out the front, the center of the console for the interior. If you listen to this, pretty nice distinct clicks for the shifter. We have the steering wheel, we have the radio, which is a decal. Uh, the steering is really cool detail here. See, we have the steering column going down this little coupler. That drives that gear, which goes into the second gear, which we previously built, which then rotates the steering the two axles here. So you can see a lot of details. You gotta wonder how they come up with this stuff. Uh, we also have part of the engine coming together. We have the valve covers. We have the spark plug wires. Really nice decals again, oil cover. It's a really cool, pretty generic parts, but with a little decal and kind of custom details that really come together. And the front end you can see is pretty close. We've got the bottom of the fender and the fog lights ready to go. So stay tuned and we'll keep going. Hey guys, it looks like we're done with back three. Uh, with back three, we really accomplished a lot in terms of interior. You can see a lot of the interior components are now defined. We have the doors and with this, you can really see the hinge is really minor. Uh, they kind of did a unique design here where the hinge is this kind of double piece. Compared to the other models, it's a lot more compact. and gives you a nice little action while kind of hiding it from the exterior. Uh, the interior two-tone seats are done. And then as, it, as an added bonus, you kind of have a hinging bottom to kind of recline back to access the rear. So really cool little details like that. And then we have kind of the boundaries of the exterior defined all the way from the engine bay the little air scoops on the side to the back. So definitely coming together. All right, so we've now completed back four. Uh, you can see in back four, we did a lot of details in terms of the rear end. Uh, we finished out a lot of the interior and then the kind of tail end is really done. You can see the emblem is done. This is just a little uh, decal. The rear lights are a pretty cool detail. It's just a little red and gray pieces alternating. So kind of standard pieces, but really cool effect. Uh, very uh, kind of iconic rear end on these fastbacks. We have the rear windshield. Uh, this is unfortunately just kind of a pre-printed piece for the side scoops. But you can see the quarter panels done, the uh, flares are in here, really nice details. Also this kind of unique black piece I haven't seen before and I guess that just kind of blacks out the uh, fenders. Uh, trunk is mostly done. I guess we'll complete it with the, uh, the actual trunk cover. Uh, the dashboard is complete. You can see we have two kind of generic gauges, uh, little overlays. Fortunately, the dashboard is not too uh, detailed but otherwise pretty nice. Uh, back seats are done. You can see to get in there, we have to kind of flip the seats and then kind of sneak in, but same pattern, same dual uh, coloring. So pretty nice details. 
You can see the roof will actually be removable. Looks like it'll be just a single panel we can take on and off. So pretty good progress. Uh All right, we've now completed bag five of six. You can see the front end is mostly complete now. We've got the front fenders done, which was a nice continuous line. We've gotten the tops of the front doors complete with the rear view mirrors. Well, this is kind of cool. It's kind of a robot hand almost. Uh, that pivots up and down with the mirror itself pivoting as well. It's a really nice attention to detail. And that adds a double hinge here, which really secures the door much better than the single with the door handle. Uh, we've also got a lot of the front end done now. So you can see this is a printed badge. We have the center lights, we have the main headlights. Uh, really nice little details, the front bumper is done. And probably the coolest thing is kind of the engine bay is now really detailed. We've got the radiator here with a little caution with a cap here. We have the fan shroud here with a caution on there. We have even the accessory belts here. It's a really nice piece. It's just two pieces of rubber band together. Uh, we also have the radiator hose running to the block. So really cool little details. Uh, additionally, we have the water reservoir tank here. The one light blue piece that came with this set. The little cap. The other cool thing is you even have the positive and negative terminals of the battery here. So really subtle details. Uh, we also have the kind of strut bars here that go from the strut towers. Uh, and brace the engine. So really nice details. All right, so we're done with the build. You can see this is the final product in the hot rod version. We have the more aggressive front dam here. We have the supercharger sticking out of here. Uh, pops right out of the hood and then the hood still opens actually. Uh, you have the pulleys right here, which unfortunately I didn't put a rubber band on as I did the other pulleys, which would have been nice. But you can see really nice detail. We have the side exhaust popping out of here, just a simple piece. And then we have this rear spoiler, which is I think a really nice detail. Simply attaches to the trunk and gives it kind of a more aggressive look. Uh, we also have the NOS bottle, of course with its own little uh, sticker, which is a really nice detail. This is actually the same pieces that were holding up the front end during the build. So a really nice way to reuse it, it's kind of surprising. So overall, yeah, details are really nice. I've got the California plates on here, being in California, of course. And uh, everything's really nice details. I'd like to also point out these are not decals, which is great, because otherwise I would have lost a few hair, pieces of hair doing that, because it's just stressful. The worst part about these things are the decals themselves just trying to get them on straight. Same thing with these, these are uh, custom pieces for this model, possibly shared with something else. Uh, converting between the hot rod version and non-hot rod version is pretty easy. You can see this kind of just rotates in the back. You go from aggressive to non-aggressive. Uh, the blower we just pull out, open the trunk, open the hood again, drop in our carburetor. That's our air filter in there now. We got our hood scoop. Simple piece attaches on two pieces on the back. Pop off the front dam. And then we reattach, swap out the exhaust so we take out these pieces. And then go back to our rear and then pop in the normal exhaust. So you can see pretty easy. I actually like this configuration best. So this is the standard configuration plus spoiler in the NOS, which you can't see normally. So I think really nice. Uh, one thing I'd like to do is also compare this to my other favorite Lego model, the Ferrari F40. So the F40 was a really nice model, I think about two years old now. They've discontinued it on the Lego store, but you can still find it online. Uh, you can see the scale is pretty substantial. While this also has opening features, everything is smaller. The seats themselves are about 50% the size. And here's where you can actually see some of the details that have gone into this, like the hinges I keep mentioning. Uh, these are really flush, simple, don't break the body lines too much. And you can see it's just two uh, hidden pieces in the back. 
What's different is with the previous model, like this Ferrari F40, they used uh, kind of a post here. So it kind of breaks up the lines, much more obvious. Other features is like the engine. On this one, while it's detailed and you can pull it out, it's a lot simpler, less decal work. You compare that to what we have in the Ford. And I mean, this is kind of day and night. This is substantially more detailed, nicer pieces, additional decals. So it's definitely a nice comparison. Uh, so yeah, that 13 and a half inches, this thing is huge. Uh, be aware of that, it takes up a lot of space. If you're a die cast collector, I also have kind of a 1 uh, Lotus Elise here. This is a higher end model, opening doors, opening trunk, and you can see the scale. Uh, this is 1 so this is probably closer to 110, 111, much larger. You can essentially park this on top. Uh, if we also do another comparison, this is a Hot Wheel car. Usually Hot Wheels are around 164. And you can see this thing is kind of tiny compared to this. So overall, very happy. I think this is a great model. Uh, the build itself was fairly easy. I think there's always some confusion with some of the parts when you have differentiating, trying to differentiate between light gray, gray, and black is a little bit difficult, but yeah, overall really happy and it was a great model. All right, now that we've finished building the Lego, it's time to give it a final rating and go over the pros and cons. In terms of pros, the intricate details is a big one. It's pretty amazing how much detail they packed into a little Lego sized car from pulleys to the water tanks to the reclining seats. Uh, the con of that is unfortunately $150 price tag. So this is much more expensive than your standard toy Lego. Uh, the other pro is it's, it provides an hours of fun to assemble. It's taken me about two weeks doing about an hour or so each day. So you get a couple, you get multiple hours of fun and then you get to play with it after. Uh, the con is sometimes the instructions are a little bit unclear. Uh, there are some gray pieces, dark gray and then black, and it's pretty hard to tell them apart when you're doing the instructions. So you may have to go back and forth a few times. Uh, the last pro is it's the iconic fastback design. The proportions on this model are really great, especially compared to like the Aston Martin Lego, which is really poorly proportioned. This one really matches the actual car proportions and the real life uh, design. Uh, the only con for this is this being a Lego creator, it doesn't have all the Technic uh, mechanical features. There's no pistons moving up and down, there's no gearbox, but you do get some of the kind of more basic functionality like steering. So in terms of a rating, I'm gonna give the Ford Mustang a 9.5 out of 10. I think this is one of the best creator models yet. Great proportions, great details, great size, and really fun built. So I hope you enjoyed the review and the build. Uh, hope you see you guys again on the channel. Don't forget to visit us at thesweetcyclist.com to see full length articles and also follow us on Instagram at the Sweet Cyclist, where you'll see behind the scene photos before the videos are released. And uh, lastly, don't forget to like and subscribe and the Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride and we'll catch you in the next one.